Welcome to another episode of Can Yes Fix It, where you guys send in your broken or faulty parts and I try and fix them as best as I can. And in today's episode, we actually have quite a few problems here on the table. We've got faulty Ryzen 5 3600, we've got a faulty B550 motherboard, faulty GPUs, and also some other stuff. So let's get straight into these parts right here and find out exactly what these problems are and how we can fix them. If you want to get yourself a cheap, legit Windows 10 Pro Key license, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as $15. When you use that coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows activated right now. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And this is the first one that I was very curious about. The first problem, which comes in via Kevin, and he's sent over two defective CPUs. This is the letter they sent in here. They said enclosed are two defective CPUs to have fun with. The Ryzen 5 3600 has two defective cores. The system would not get into Windows at all if all six cores are enabled. I did not play with the clock speeds or voltages, just moved on to the next one. Also included is an i5-7500, which would produce random blue screens when it was in Windows. It was some time ago that I diagnosed the i5, but if I remember correctly, it would be random when using Windows, but Ida64 was able to duplicate it consistently. I also included a Christmas gift. I hope you enjoy it. Apparently they book up quickly there, so call ahead. They had to send me a picture of the gift card via text message, but you shouldn't have any problems. If you do, let me know and I can send you the CC receipt as well. Cheers and Merry Christmas, Kevin. So thank you very much for the CPUs and also the gift, Kevin. I'm definitely going to enjoy that. But let's get into this Ryzen 5 3600 and see if we can fix it since from what I'm hearing on the internet, there's quite a few faulty Ryzen 5 3600s going around nowadays. So this Ryzen 5 3600, it freezes in the BIOS. So this is actually really good for me to diagnose the problem straight away, because if I end up fixing this CPU, then it won't freeze in the BIOS. So I'm surprised, Kevin, you even made it to Windows because this thing is locking up really quick. So we're gonna try in this BIOS to disable some of the cores or the CCD, whichever one I can find the options for and then get into Windows and see if things work. So, <laughs> so we're now in Windows and I reduced the cores down to two cores, four threads. And this is just absolutely useless. Like if I have this CPU in this state, it is not going to work properly. So two cores, four threads going down from six cores, 12 threads. That's just an absolute no-no. Uh, we've got what, a Ryzen 1? I think because even you get like on a Ryzen 3, you get four cores, eight threads. So <laughs> we're gonna move on and try something else in the BIOS. I'm gonna try actually bring the clock speeds down as well, just to try out that. See if the out of the box uh, clock speeds are not working properly on this Ryzen 5 3600. Now here we are in Windows and we have this Ryzen 5 3600 working with six cores, 12 threads, absolutely fine. And this is working at now 3.3 gigahertz. So basically I managed to, when I was in the BIOS, drop these speeds down to 3.3 on the multiplier or 33 on the multiplier, quickly save and exit. And then when I got back into the BIOS, everything was working absolutely fine. I just left it there for five minutes, came back, everything was still working. I was like, okay, this is a really good sign. Then we went into Windows, ran a Cinebench, ran a Unigine Heaven just to make sure everything else was working fine. And that's some really good news, but also bad news because this is a CPU that's not that old and it's already having problems in terms of degradation. And this is exactly what it is. Make no mistake about it. This CPU has degraded to the point where it can no longer work with its settings out of the box. So we had to lower those clock settings and then they work. So this is a really worrisome thing going forward because if people have Ryzen 5 3600s, which is sort of like the bottom of the barrel in terms of the silicon quality versus say the 3800X or the 3950X or even the 3600X, it's actually worrisome to see this because a lot more people may be having problems with the Ryzen 5 3600 in the next couple of years. 
And so since this was probably, I believe it's the most popular sold Ryzen 3000 series CPU, I believe it's actually one of the most popular CPUs to date, it is cause for concern if these CPUs were driven too hard out of the box from AMD in order to beat Intel on the benchmarks, but it's at the cost of people, um, I guess, having problems in the future. And so this is actually a really worrisome thing. I've actually got another PC here. I did a build recently with a used Ryzen 5 3600 I picked up off the marketplace. And there was one thing that was concerning in that as well. So I may end up doing a dedicated video on this topic because there is something else on my other Ryzen 5 3600 that was worrying me as well. And I'm gonna take a look at that. So when you combine some things together, you can get an answer to why these Ryzen 5 3600s are failing like this one did. So next up here, we've got this i5-7400 and I've got a build here that I've already done, a gaming PC that I've already built up. I was going to list it. We'll put the i5-7400, I think it said on the letter it was a 7500, but it says on the thing it's a 7400 with the b sod text on there. But we're gonna quickly try and insert this into this uh, PC that I know works 100% and then come back and see what's going on here. So this next one is really crazy where this i5-7400, it ended up bricking my motherboard. I've never seen this before. I essentially put it in the motherboard, the motherboard just wouldn't turn on, nothing would work. And I shouldn't have cycled it more than once. I just tried cycling it a few times. But now when I put the i7-7700 back in that motherboard, which was working perfectly fine before, it'll just give me this extremely weird blue screen. So I'm gonna put that up on the screen. Maybe this is the blue screen you're seeing, Kevin because this is what's happening now with the working CPU and motherboard. So if anything, this i5-7400, I believe it could be a motherboard killer. I've heard stories of CPUs uh, destroying motherboards, and this one, I think I've finally come into one. I've heard it in the wild. I've heard rumors and people talking stories on the internet about CPUs potentially uh, destroying motherboards. I always thought it was a myth, and I've finally come into one that is bricking motherboards because this this Zeus motherboard just doesn't work the same anymore it won't load my boot drive it won't even load up the usb to get into windows it just blue screen straight away so this is really crazy i'm gonna put this one aside i mean i really want to just chuck it off the balcony because it's cost me a motherboard now but yeah let's just get on with the show anyway we'll figure out something later so with those first two cpus out of the way that's a balancing act in itself. We've got a Ryzen 5 3600 that can work fine. It's just got lower clock speeds, but then we've got a CPU, an i5 7th gen that is literally killing motherboards, which I've never seen before. So <laughs> that one is absolutely mind boggling. But let's get into this next problem here, which comes from Benjamin. And they say, hi, Brian, here is a MOBO I got off Gumtree of April last year. There seems to be an issue with the zero insertion frame for the CPU. I was able to eventually get the CPU in. However, there seems to be an intermittent USB issue. I couldn't be asked dealing with the YOLO caster slash gigabyte, but if you're like, send an email to, I cannot read the handwriting, sorry, brother. And I'll also blur that out, but be happy to send you the invoice I got from the seller. So we got this B550 on the table here. And actually, as soon as it came in and I got back to Australia, I was very curious about it because I needed a B550 motherboard, a proper one for testing, and nothing looked wrong on the surface. And then I tried to insert a Ryzen 5 5500 just to start off with, and it inserted absolutely fine. Then I booted it up and everything was working perfectly. So what I think the problem here is, and actually also I did pretty much all my benchmarking that I've done in Australia on AM4 on this motherboard, so it works phenomenally well. There's no issues whatsoever. But what I think the issue that you have in Benjamin was, I believe you tried to insert a Ryzen CPU with either a bent pin or a slightly bent pin. And as you're inserting that CPU, it, the pin's just gone and either busted or uh, broken off and that's causing the USB issues. That pin that was faulty from the get-go was the pin that was controlling the USB connection. So I believe that was your issue, was actually the CPU. And this is very important, guys, if you're installing AM4 CPUs, 
they should just insert on their own. So if you put the CPU over all the holes and you've lined it up properly, the CPU should just drop in with that lever up. And if there's any resistance whatsoever, there's either bent pins or something's wrong. So take your time, never force a Ryzen AM4 CPU into the socket because if you bend a CPU pin so far down, when you try to bend it back, it could snap off. So this is, I believe, the problem that you're having. Though we got this one working 100%, thank you very much for the donation. And now it's finally time to move on to the next problem here, which comes from Michael, and it's actually not so much a problem. It's a, a letter that they sent in. They actually sent two packages over, and they said, Hi, Brian, some extra stuff I've found that I no longer need. A few things new and sealed in their original packaging. Glad to see you had a great time in Japan and got to spend time with your son and family. And he's sending big love hearts there. Love hearts to you guys as well. Life's been a lot better in 2022. Hopefully it's gonna get better in 2023 as well. But I sent you a few Mobo X5690 CPUs and missed cables, etc. in the past. I also purchased your $50 PC with Cooler Master Nvidia case and X58 PC setup which you posted a video about a couple of years back. So Michael, I do remember that. Thank you very much for purchasing that PC. Uh, that was actually one of my favorite videos I've done to date. It was this banged up PC that was so filthy and we cleaned it up and we got it working perfectly. And it was for the Fortnite gaming PC. It's actually one of the most viewed videos here on the channel too. So I'm glad you, uh, actually that one is sentimental. So I'm glad you've, I kept that PC and I'm glad you've enjoyed it. And also, thanks for the gifts. So I don't think Michael uh, sent in anything that's problematic, but thanks for the gifts so much. He's got some fans here and in the past, I believe, yeah, he has sent over some X5690 CPUs. I've wondered um, who they came from because they just rocked up in the mail and he sent them over and now I realize that was you. So thank you very much for sending over those CPUs in the past. And some of the stuff here is really good. I actually believe you sent over some Arctic RGB fans as well, which I've already used in a gaming PC, which I've already flipped. So thank you very much for that. The one thing he's got here is some heat shrink tube assortment, which, and so sometimes I do cut up wires and solder on new wires and with power supplies and other things like that and that's to stay strictly on a budget. And I guess you don't like the electrical tape, so you sent over some heat shrink tube assortment, which I'll be sure to use because I do have a heat gun here, so I will get onto that. There's also a mouse here, a Storm Pro Honeycomb gaming mouse. I'm not too sure about that. I'll give that a go. Uh, I'm pretty happy with my Logitech G102. That's my main mouse at the moment. So thank you very much for sending over those goodies and gifts. Though we're gonna get onto the final problem here. And this one, I believe, is the one a lot of you guys come to see Can Yes Fix It For. And this is faulty GPUs. We've got five of these on the table. And one of them is actually from the person who works at a computer store called Umart. And when I was in there just picking up some PC parts, I mainly get cases and power supplies and stuff from there. They just said, hey, Tech S City. And I'm like, hey man, he's like, I got a Vega 64 and it sometimes switches off when it's running and I want you to take a look at it. So we'll take a look at that Vega 64. We've also got a 1080 Ti that apparently just doesn't boot and also a 1080 that gives out no boot as well. And then there's a GTX 970 with no boot and also an RX 570 with no boot too. So when it comes to graphics cards, especially if I get a pile of GPUs in, that are coming from people, I usually just get straight into the tech yes loving, which is what we're gonna do, because if I start testing out and looking at the problems, those problems could be caused by just debris and dirt in the wrong places, and that dirt is either, that debris is either conductive or capacitive, and so what I do is I get the multi-purpose spray, I take all the crap off the GPUs and just bring them back to their bare minimum condition. That is just the heat sink on the GPU silicon. I remove all the rest of the crap because if these GPUs, if I can get them working, I'm going to be undervolting them anyway and taking down their power limits and reducing the strain. So let's get straight into cleaning these GPUs and find out what the problems are.
So we have now cleaned up all these GPUs. We've taken off the back plates. We have uh, cleaned up all the dirt and debris out of them. We've given all the input output ports a good clean as well as put new thermal paste in each and every one of them. Now, there's also a lot of memory pads that are dodgy. They've all flaked up and just crackled off. So we're just leaving them off, even though in the long term you shouldn't do it. But also since if we can get any of these GPUs working, we're gonna be undervolting. That's gonna circumvent that problem where you're running lower power, you're running lower memory speeds, lower core clocks, everything's gonna be running cooler anyway. And you also manually up your fan speeds so the whole GPU is just running absolutely fine, even with all that extra stuff on the GPU. But let's get into the first GPU we've got here. And that is the GTX 1080 Ti, which I'm very curious about. So this 1080 Ti actually boots up and makes it into Windows after this clean, because I was told it just wouldn't boot or wouldn't even get into Windows or even into the BIOS before I got it. But it's now getting into Windows. However, when we did run a benchmark, it did freeze up straight away. Now, I've opened up MSI Afterburner and dropping the memory speeds down straight away, all the way down actually, minus 500 megahertz on this GPU allows it to work properly, which is actually kind of scary. This is overwhelming evidence in my opinion, coupled with when I looked at the cooler closely, it had been used very heavily. This is from a crypto miner. So Eddie, you uh, donated this graphics card in to let me try and fix it. You, whoever you bought this off was mining cryptocurrency very heavily and you can just tell by the core clock having such healthy clocks still, we can actually up those, but then you've got to down the memory speed so far down to get it to work properly. So this GPU, it'll still work, but for how long it will still work, I don't know. You would have to basically replace all the memory um, VRAM chips on the board but even then that's a big job in itself and it's something I don't have any expertise with, but yeah, that's kind of a win and a loss at the same time because we do have a 1080 Ti working, but how good of a workaround that is, I don't know. I mean, there is one more option and that is if you've got a host clock that you can drop down to say 80 megahertz from 100 megahertz, you could get around it by allowing the GPU to work normally that way too. So for what it's worth, it works fine, but the memory is just bad out of the box now at its stock default settings. And unfortunately with NVIDIA, you can't flash custom biases to lower the memory speeds because there are none that exist. So we've got now a GTX 970 that even though the PC is cycling normally, this is just giving out no signal. So we're actually gonna put this aside since this 970 actually has the co compatibility to go uh, to a VGA signal. So that's something I always try because sometimes the HDMI ports can just blow out. Someone maybe tried plugging a USB into the HDMI or something happened, short circuit happened and that, that no longer works. But we'll put that aside, try something else on that later. Uh, let's get on now to the GTX 1080. This GTX 1080 just gives out no signal whatsoever. However, unlike the 970, this is freezing up the computer. So I believe this one is just a goner, but we can try something a little bit later uh, just to see if it can boot up. And that's basically, I gotta find a motherboard around here. As we said with that 10 yeah, I gotta find a motherboard with a base clock that can go down and see if we can drop the base clock down and see if that'll enable the GPU to even boot up. Now we're onto the RX 570 eight gigabyte. And this one's a bit of a weird one because it, doesn't boot by itself like the GTX 1080, but it did allow the PC to kind of cycle into Windows and cycle out of Windows. And that's why it's kind of cool to have a BIOS code readout if you're able to get one. But what we're gonna do now is put this aside as well, try it on a DVI port uh, when we get a different monitor hooked up. And we're gonna get on now to the Vega 64 from Sev. So this Vega 64, it boots up absolutely fine. So Vega 64, as soon as I heard about problems out of the box and a gigabyte OC model, I knew straight away that it's most likely gonna be caused by just too aggressive voltage settings and even clock speeds out of the box where these cards just ran so hot. I don't know why they had such an aggressive tune out of the box. It was just at the detriment of just essentially wasted heat and also 
Uh, in this case, we've managed to get it working properly. We've just had to undervolt it in the Adrenaline software. So this one's working fine now. It was shutting off before. I was getting problems with out of the box settings, but after undervolting it, it's running under 200 watts roughly now. And it seems to have not shut off when I just left it stress testing for about 30 minutes. So your graphics card does work fine, Seb. It's just that it needs a custom tune and perhaps you might wanna flash, flash a custom BIOS on this with different settings. So if someone already has made a custom BIOS for Vega 64, one that'll work with this Gigabyte edition, do let us know as I'm gonna hand this back to Sev and he wanted to see this on the Can Yes Fix It episode. So here it is. It does work fine, it just needs some custom tuning. So the GTX 970, we found a monitor. I'm actually out of monitors with stands. So we've got a monitor here with no stand, but the GTX 970 works absolutely fine over that DVI to VGA converted line. And the really good thing is in Windows, we're able to up the memory speeds, up the core clocks. So this GTX 970 is actually still very healthy. It's got a good life. It's just that the HDMI ports don't work properly. So now this RX 570, it is so frustrating because I am so close. What I'm trying to do is flash an RX 470 BIOS onto it with lower memory clocks as well as lower base clocks because I believe that could help it work. If, if again, if this was from a crypto miner, then just like that 1080 Ti, it could be a problem where it just needs lower clock speeds and it may be able to work still, but I'm getting so close here. I'm basically trying to flash a RX 470 BIOS on, but before I can do it, the whole computer essentially freezes up because it's trying to access the GPU and it's just not working at its default settings. So I've got to find a motherboard around here with the lower base clock and hopefully I've got one because I've checked around already and some of them have the feature, but they don't go lower than 100. So I've got to go find a board now that'll go down to say 80 or something like that and that'll help uh, me boot up possibly into Windows and then able to flash a lower BIOS onto this RX 570. We have some really good news here with this RX 570, or actually I don't know if you call it 570 anymore, but maybe RX 470. But what we did was we managed to find a board around here that could take the base clock in the BIOS down to 97.5. So we dropped it down 2.5%. And I was like, at this stage, I was looking around my studio for a board that could drop it down more, but I couldn't find anything. So I took the gamble with that and it did freeze. The GPU was coming up in Windows as problematic, device not working properly, and, I'll, and I'm using another GPU, a GTX 1060 around here that I know that works. But the second GPU, you can sometimes do this and quickly flash the GPU to a lower clocked GPU and then hopefully it works after that. And that's exactly what we managed to do after a couple of times resetting and I had to do this like a speed run but I managed to get this RX 470 BIOS with the same Samsung GDDR5 memory off with lower memory speeds, lower clock speeds. It flashed fine. And then after that, the GPU worked 100%. So this is what we got now, a GPU, an RX 570 that's back from the grave. And it looks like it's running the benchmarks absolutely fine. So that's what it's all about with Can Yes Fix It is just getting those GPUs where otherwise nothing's wrong with it. It's just maybe the memory or the, the GPU silicon's just degraded, but you can flash a lower clocked BIOS on and we're now good to go. That's an RX 570 that's working 100%. So we're gonna try this uh, GTX 1080 with the 2.5% lower base clock, just see if we can get a signal out of it or we'll see what happens in Windows. But I mean, it's the last piece of the puzzle and I'm really happy at this stage, so let's give it a shot. So unfortunately, this last GPU, the GTX 1080, not the TI, this uh, was just not showing up in Windows at all when I used it as a secondary GPU. So this one here, I believe, is just completely goners unless I can find a motherboard that can take the B clock down a lot. And I've just got to research which motherboard can do that if there's a particular model, even if it'd be good if actually there was an AliExpress model they could take it down to even 80. I think 80 would be a really good spot. And this would give you a twofold purpose and that would just save you a lot of time. You wouldn't have windows crashing all the time like I did with that RX 570. But the second purpose would be you can actually get that flash off if you've got that lower clocked uh, V BIOS ready to go. So 
If you guys do know a motherboard that can take that base clock down quite substantially, I would love to know what the recommendations are. I just haven't used one that could take it down in quite a while. So I forgot exactly which models could do it. So would appreciate any feedback. And also if you're into uh, fixing up stuff like we're doing here today, it'd be great to have one on hand. So that's definitely something that came out of today was these GPUs that a lot of them, four out of five of the GPUs can work properly. It's just that uh, three of them need to be tuned after the fact, or at least with the RX 570, it needed to have a flash. So two of the four, the Vega 64 and also the GTX 1080 Ti, need a program installed to undervolt them. But the Vega 64 should be able to get a VBIOS as well, a custom one that's undervolted. If you guys know of one, do let us know in the comment section below. But the RX 570, that's now 470, it works fine without any tuning. And also that GTX 970 works fine off the uh, DVI converted to VGA port. So GPUs, that was really good what we did there in terms of just bringing them back to life. And especially if you're on an extreme budget and you come across someone who's giving away a GPU and they say, look, I can't get this thing working, just have it. You can put together yourself a really uh, cheap gaming PC. But of course, you do need to have a time and patience to try and get the stuff working. And it can be a bit of an uphill battle as we saw in today's uh, episode. But in terms of some of the parts that came out today, the Ryzen 5 3600, that does work fine. I'm gonna do a follow-up video as we said earlier, really looking into that more and the problems that potentially more of these CPUs will face in the future and give you guys my thoughts and opinions on that. But also that i5 7400, the myth is true. You can get a CPU that can uh, destroy motherboards. So do be very careful of running into faulty CPUs. That's something I learned here today. Very scary phenomenon, but it can happen. So then we look at that B550 motherboard. That would be my favorite out of all the parts here today because that works 100% and it's actually an extremely relevant part that I'm in desperate need of. I always find I need B550 motherboards and they're actually getting very expensive. So the fact that that one came in and it was uh, ended up working absolutely fine, that was a real plus. But do let us know in the comment section below, guys, what was your favorite fix in today's video? We actually came into some really good janky fixes here. I'm really happy that you guys uh, wanna see these episodes. Uh, what I'll do is, since I will be going to back to Japan in the next month or two, I will get a PO box over there if you guys wanna make that happen and we can make Can Yes Fix ha happen over in Japan as well. And I know you guys enjoyed this one as much as I do, so I'll also leave the PO box, I think I said this for the second time already in today's video, but I'll leave the PO box in the description below if you guys wanna send stuff in. And with that side, we've also got the question of the day here, which comes from uh, Joe Sendalon1923. And they asked, which is better, used or refurbished motherboard? And when it comes to used or refurbished, they kind of can mean the same thing, depending if the refurbished person has just came into a working board and cleaned it up, or it can be that the person's fixing it up and that they've actually replaced faulty parts. Me personally, I prefer a used motherboard that has signs that it works 100% and it's signs that it hasn't been used that much because I find with properly refurbished stuff where they've changed the parts over from faulty to brand new again, I find some of the times those parts, the faulty part could have actually uh, allowed other parts around it to be damaged. And even though you fixed it and it works, I find sometimes those refurbished parts will actually only have a few months left in them before those weakened parts will go as well. So I actually prefer good solid use deals that uh, show really good signs that they're gonna continue to work. I've actually done some videos on things to look out for. I'll put a link up here if you guys wanna see that video as well as some previous episodes of Can Yes Fix It. So anyway guys, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech guest content. Be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.